In our previous video, we were looking at a uh, signal that had uh, a variable hold time that sometimes missed the, uh, the window. And what we're looking at right here is that is the data signal. In other words, the D input to that flip-flop. And you may recall if you watched that last video that part of the problem was the fall time of this signal was uh, quite a bit, uh, well, was slower than the clock. And so uh, uh, we speculated that the uh, part of the problem with the uh, unreliability of the uh, flip-flop to, to properly latch the D signal was due to the slow fall time. And so what I have done is turned on statistics. I'll show you how you do this in a, in a little bit. But in the lower left hand corner you'll see uh, a box that, uh, let me see if we can just move in on it a little bit better. That shows statistics for the rise and fall time of this uh, signal. Now once again the signal is the D input to that flip-flop. And what we're looking at today is how do you analyze uh, signals in an embedded system to determine whether they are within spec and whether they are uh, present potential problems that need to be resolved. So what I have done is collected statistics of a thousand uh, rise times and a thousand fall times for this uh, signal. You may notice that the deviation on the fall time is about 480 picoseconds. And on the rise time, the deviation, that's the next to the bottom uh, row, is 344 picoseconds. So what we uh, suspected, which is that the fall, the fall time of this signal is slower than the rise time, is true. And we now have uh, some statistical uh, data to support that. So how do we go about collecting this and why would we even care? Well of course the reason we care is that a signal that is rising or falling slower than it should given the technology. Now of course for example slow speed CMOS is going to have a much slower rise and fall time than say emitter coupled logic or uh, shot key uh, logic and so on. Uh, the, and generally the signals in your embedded system should fit within the parameters of the technology that that particular system is using. Now, of course, in some cases, this is determined by the microprocessor that uh, is uh, embedded in the system, or in the case of a field programmable array, it's determined by the actual manufacturer. But it sometimes will vary depending on how those signals are used. So we're not going to get into the issue of design, but I think you can imagine that a a uh, driver trying to drive a capacitive load is going to have much more difficulty keeping the rise and fall times crisp than one that is driving a well-matched high impedance non-capacitive load, in other words a pure resistor. So let's uh, talk about how we set this up and then we'll uh, take a look at how we also do some timing analysis on clock pulses and hopefully we'll be able to keep this video a little bit short. So here we have the data signal, the D signal. The way that we go about setting up 
to this to gather statistics on the rise and fall time is we click on measure and of course there's also a, a button on the front panel that is uh, called measure there also is a uh, think maybe I'm wrong yeah I think I am wrong I thought there was a menu item for this but apparently there is not so if you click on measure either on the touch screen up here or on the front panel you get a measure uh, menu then to add a rise time or fall time or any of the others you click on the add button and you get a, a selection of various things. Now we could check period or frequency, but since this is a data signal, period and frequency will vary a lot depending on uh, how, how and how often that the data changes. But one thing that should be relatively constant is rise time and fall time. So we click on those, and you may notice down here in the lower left-hand corner we now have a, a couple of boxes for fall time and rise time that uh, show there. The going, closing this and going back to the measure menu, you'll see a uh, box here called statistic. So we're going to click on that. It's then going to ask us for a count. It's generally a good idea to gather a thousand or more samples. Uh, you can do less. I'm going to only do a hundred this time because uh, just to keep the video shorter. So uh, I click on that and I'm going to say 100 samples and then we're going to turn the statistics on and hit reset statistics. Now you'll see that down here in the lower left hand corner it is collecting statistics and it has now collected 100 statistics. They're relatively close to the ones we collected with a thousand. 470 or so picoseconds for the deviation on the fall time and 330 to 340 on the rise time. Notice that the top line is the current reading. The next is the average of all the samples. The, the following one is the maximum fall time and rise time and the minimum and then the standard deviation and at the bottom is the number of counts over which those statistics were gathered. So from this you can get an idea of how closely this data signal is adhering to the particular uh, requirements or specifications for the technology that you're using in your embedded system. So now the next thing that we'll want to do is look at a clock signal and see how we go about measuring that and gathering statistics on those. Now we are looking at the clock signal for that same D flip-flop. Notice that we can see a variation here in the uh, clock. It's, it's moving back and forth. Now this is a really bad clock and it's designed that way. It was actually constructed to be a bad clock specifically for the purpose of illustrating how you go about measuring such a thing. So, once again, we go into measure, and then we add, and in this case, we're going to add a period and a frequency measurement. Then, just as before, we're going to click on statistic, and we're going to turn statistic on, and we've left the count at 100, and now we're going to click on Reset Statistic. By the way, you should always reset the statistic after changing anything. Otherwise, the, the statistics are uh, unpredictable as to what uh, values you'll get. You may notice now that we're getting a 
tremendous variation in the deviation. Uh, the The deviation can be seven to eight hundred uh, hertz on the frequency, and three, four, sometimes five hundred uh, picoseconds on the uh, period. Uh, and this is on a clock that should be much more stable than this. By the way. This is what is, is called uh, deterministic uh, jitter. By deterministic, and there's a good, uh, if you go to the Keysight Labs website, you'll find uh, a two-minute uh, guru as well as a little bit longer tutorial uh, on jitter that I suggest if you don't understand what jitter is all about, it's basically when a signal like this moves back and forth. Now, we can see the jitter on this signal. It's deliberately uh, enhanced. But on other uh, systems, you may not be able to see this jitter, but you will be able to gather statistics on the jitter and uh, we're going to reset the statistics. Notice that we're getting an average of about 1.24 uh, megahertz, but a max of 1.25 and a minimum of 1.247 megahertz for the, the frequency. The, Generally, on a system like this, it's better to use period to measure the, uh, the jitter. And some more advanced oscilloscopes will have built-in jitter uh, functions. The MSO5000 does not have that, at least not to my knowledge, but for example, some of the better Keysight and Tektronics oscilloscopes do have the ability to do things like uh, eye diagrams to further uh, characterize the jitter of signals like these clocks. But what I'm trying to do here is to show you how to use the basic features of the MSO5000. So one of the things you can do on your clock signals is look not just at the amplitude. In this case, you notice that its uh, amplitude also is moving around. So you might want to look at that. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can add a measure of, in this case, vertical volts peak to peak. And you see that uh, we are getting quite a variation, 37 millivolts, 36, 37 millivolts of deviation on this signal. So that may or may not be in spec. But once again, by adding measurements and then doing statistical analysis on those measurements, you can quantify how good or bad the signals in your embedded system are. So I hope this video is helpful to those who may have wondered well, what do we use all these measurements for? If you watch the math and measurement video from earlier, uh, this is one of the places where using a measurement to gather statistics on your signals can be helpful in making sure that your system is within the specifications. As I say, I hope you'll stay tuned and get something out of this video as well as some future videos. But as usual, please stay safe and have a nice day.